Hello viewers and welcome to Learning with JGO. In today's lesson, we shall discuss the summary of the death and the king's horseman by Wally Sonika. I entreat you all to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you find it informative. Death and the King's Horseman is a play based on real-life events in the city of Oyo, Nigeria, during the colonial era. The play talks about a king's horseman who, as a result of sheer lust and his absolute sexual desires, fails to honor his king and his people by committing a ritual suicide as prescribed by tradition. The British government in Nigeria would not want to see such a barbaric custom practiced under their watch. Sonika demonstrates in this play not only the clash of cultures between the African and the European, but also the apathy and the lack of commitment that Africans themselves show in executing duties that are supposed to bring betterment for all. It's 30 days since the king's death, and the day has finally arrived for Elessin Oba to honor his duty as the king's horseman. The play opens in the evening with Elessin Oba, together with drummers and praise singers, marching towards the market on their horses. When they finally arrive, the king's horseman, Elessin, is heaped with praises from all corners of the market as an honorable man. The market women leave behind their work and come around to flirt with Elessin Oba. Elessin talks about the importance of this day and how he intends to make it a memorable one. It is his last day on earth, for the time has come for Elessin Oba, the king's horseman, to accompany the dead king, Aladdin, to the afterworld. Elessin dances through the market square, where he calls home, and chants a tale of the not eye bird, which failed to fulfill its duty as a bird. The chant of the story of the not eye bird is in response to the priest singer, Olohun Iyo, who is making sure that Elessin still intends to die. Elessin Oba assures everybody about his intention to die on this day and makes emphasis on what an honor it will be to die for his king. Before he leaves the earth, he wants to enjoy his last day, draped in fine clothes by the woman. When Ialoja, the mother of all children in the village, appears, there is much reassurance from Elessin, who is surrounded with glorious dances from the market woman as they make call and response chant that when the time arrives for him to fulfill his duty, he will not delay. Soon, a very young lady enters into the market square and lights the whole place up. Ellison is immediately perplexed and astonished by the woman's beauty. The sight of the beautiful goddess, as Ellison describes her, will mark the beginning of a turn in events, for he is absolutely distracted. Ellison demands to be wedded to the beautiful lady who is already engaged to Ia Loja's son. Elessin pleads with Ia Loja to be granted this request as a pattern gift for it is his last day on earth. Ia Loja finally grants the king's horseman his wish but warns him not to bring any calamity on his people by refusing to die when the time arrives. In response, Elessin asks for his burial cloth to be prepared for he is convinced he is ready to die. Act 2 of the play takes place later in the evening, at the home of Simon Pilkins, a British officer in charge of the administration of the Nigerian colony at a local level. Pilkins and his wife, Jane, are seen wearing their gungun, a sacred traditional costume reserved for cult leaders in the Oyo community, and are dancing the tango in preparation for a ball. Amusa, a Nigerian policeman working for the British, is terrified at the sight of the couple wearing the gungun dress when he arrives to give his daily report to his master, Mr. Pilkins. Despite being a devout Muslim, Amusa is terrified to speak to his master unless the costume is taken off, for he has great respect for the costume. Pilkins rubbishes Amusa's antics and maintains his stance of wearing the costume to the ball in order to win the costume prize. The district officer is distressed by Amusa's report. Elessin Oba is about to commit a suicide. When Pilkins hears sounds of drums and celebrations nearby, he asks Joseph, a Nigerian houseboy working for him, the meaning of those sounds. 
Pilkins gets irritated when he's told by Joseph that he's unsure about the sounds that are being made. Pilkins disregards his wife's suggestion of skipping the ball and tackling the issue at hand. To prevent any unnecessary disturbance at the ball which the Prince of England is due to attend, Pilkins orders for the arrest of Ellison Oba. The third act introduces us once again to the market where the celebration of Ellison's wedding to the bride takes place. When Amusa and two other officers attempt to arrest Ellison, the market woman rain insults on them for abiding by the laws of the whites while neglecting the calamity that is said to befall the community if Ellison gets arrested. They finally pounce on the officers and send them away. When Ellison emerges out from one of the market stalls, converted into a wedding chamber, he presents a white cloth stained with blood as evidence that the bride is a virgin. Moments after, Ellison hears the sounds of drums which suggest his time on earth is coming to an end. From the drum sounds, he can tell that the king's dog and horse have been slaughtered and it will soon be his turn to follow. Ellison Oba prepares to depart the world into the next. He falls into a trance and is accompanied by chants and drum sounds from the priest singers. It's past midnight and Ellison hasn't departed the world as he promised. In the fourth act of the play, the Prince of England is introduced into the resident's home with music played by a band. Immediately, the prince gets fascinated by the costumes worn by Pilkins and Jane. Pilkins is pulled out of the ball by the residents and is reminded of his duty to support the empire following a note from Amusa about Ellison's suicide. When it's almost midnight, Pilkins leaves Jane at the ballroom for the marketplace to arrest Ellison as he suspects Ellison will be ready to kill himself during that period. Olunde emerges out from the shadows and approaches Jane. Olunde is Ellison's firstborn, who was sent to England by Pilkins to study medicine. He comes back as a doctor, not forgetting his roots. He has come to bury his father, Ellison Oba. Olunde is involved in a gentle argument with Jane. He shows his unhappiness in seeing Jane disrespect his culture by wearing the sacred Ogungun costume at the ball. They discuss the Second World War. Olunde reminds her of the millions of lives that are being lost as a result of the war, yet the people of Oyo are prevented from having one man die for all the people as tradition demands to bring peace and balance. Jane is reluctant to direct Olunde to Pilkins. Soon, Olunde hears the sounds of drums and calmly waits in anticipation for the death of his father. After a deafening silence which seems to have confirmed the death of Ellison, Pilkins appears and thanks Olunde for not interfering in the ritual that sees the king's horseman accompany the king to the next world. Olunde is shocked to hear his father's voice outside the ballroom with police officers escorting him to the prison cell. As tradition demands, Olunde refuses to look at his father when he appears. He is angered by his father's failure to honor his duty as the king's horseman and insults him as an unprincipled man. The last act of the play takes place in Ellison's cell. He is joined with Pilkins as they talk about the nature of the night. Ellison is angry at the district officer for not allowing him to fulfill his duties. He tells Pilkins of the calamity that is said to befall his community, for the king's spirit will not rest until something is done. When Pilkins voices out that he is sure Olunde will return to England after all this conundrum, Ellison disagrees. He is in fact proud of his son, a son he seemed to think had rejected his own culture for the European. Ialoja visits Ellison in a cell with an ocean of insults. She blames Ellison for not departing to the next world with the king when the time was due. She rebuked him for not paying heed to her warnings about getting married to the bride and the consequences it could land on the people of Oyo. 
Alison Oba, who initially blamed his inability to depart this world on the lack of strength to summon his powers, finally accepts all the blames. Moments after, a corpse is brought to Alison by a group of women. It's Olunde's corpse. As the heir to his father, he killed himself to save his father from shame and the community from calamities. Ellison, after seeing his son's corpse, hangs himself with his chain handcuff on the roof and dies. The bride mourns his death and covers his eyes with death, as culture demands. The mother of all children, Ialoja, admonishes the now widow to forget the dead and even the living, but focus on the future and the unborn.